Suddenly, we were doing ADR for the film and I heard myself as Alice, but it's Mila. And I was horrified because rather than bringing any reality to the part, I just made her me. And so rather than just doing the ADR that I was supposed to do, I said, no, 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 I'm doing the entire movie. And everyone was like, what? And I dubbed everything in the film and suddenly I brought my voice down. Yeah. My name is Alice. Alice was born, in my opinion. Yeah, are you kidding? When I read the Upside Down fight, I said, can't you just do more stuff like this? The thing I like about the Upside Down fight is it has this very Cirque du Soleil feel about it and hanging upside down. I guess for me, as, as well, I, I really wanted to sort of infuse a bit of her personality into that fight too. I thought it was really nice that you guys ended up using the laughter at the beginning. <laughs> That makes the fight. For me, I mean, I can't believe that wasn't even in the original screenplay. You know, that was something you came up with. You said, you know, Paul, I want to try this. I want to try a laugh. And as soon as you did it, I mean, to me, it just raised the whole level of the fight substantially. And then, of course, I could then steal that idea and kind of repeat it at the end of the movie as well. <laughs> I'd grown up watching the Romero movies, the Lucia Fulci movies, but no one had done a zombie movie in 20 years. And that's one of the things that drew me to it, was I was very excited about reinventing that genre, which of course has happened since then. I remember watching the first edit of the first Resident Evil in your house on your big old television set. and had a back and everything. Yeah. And I remember I loved the movie, but I was like, cut away from the zombies because it, it, it's just the less you see them, the better. And it was just like cut and you're like, I can't. I mean, there's only so much cutting away I can do. We need, it's a zombie movie. I mean, that's true in most monster movies is the less you see of the monster, usually the better, because then you can imagine the horror rather than being shown it. Because always what you imagine as an audience member is going to be more powerful than what I as a filmmaker can show them. I've always tried to use the most popular monsters. I mean, that was one of the things that being an avid player of the video game, I knew which the best monsters were and which the fan favorites were. First and foremost, it had to be the dogs. Then the Lickers came second, then the Nemesis. Some great additions have been the Bloodshot. And of course, the flying creature in this movie that was hinted at at the end of the last film. My favorite creature, I would say, would be the zombie dogs. I love the dogs. I remember they would like put these wet napkins like full of yucky like gel and, and fake blood and corn syrup and they would just like hang them on the dogs' bodies and they, they were, were wearing so like sweet a zombie dog. jacket. The makeup was on their bodies and their legs. The only CG part of those dogs were their faces because you couldn't put zombie makeup on their faces because they would just lick it off. It was all about those dogs. Our world is coming to an end. No survivors! What are we gonna do? We're gonna kill every last one of them. Ah! We played a long game, you and I, but now it's over. Everything has led to this. My name is Alice, and this is the end of my story. Resident Evil, the final chapter, now available.